Hi guys, good day. This is me again, Sir Jigs. And in today's session, it's actually the continuation of our previous topic, which is all about quadratic equations by factoring. But this time, our leading coefficient, or a, is greater than 1. Example, 10x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Again, the first thing that we need to do right here is to identify the values of your a, b, and c. So what is the value of our a here? That is positive 10 beside x squared. Next is our linear term. What is the value of our b? Positive 3. And our c is in the constant term, which is negative 4. So the next step that we need to do is to check the three terms if they have common factor or the greatest common factor and include this common factor in the final answer. So 10x squared, 3x, and negative 4. Do they have common factor? x, it's not x. The fact that our constant term doesn't have variable. How about 10, 3, and 4? Do these uh, numbers have common factor? All right, so I think we don't have any common factor of the three terms, so we need to proceed to the next step, which is to get the product of a and c and list all its factors. So what is the value of our c? Negative 4. And what about our a? Positive 10. What is the product of negative 4 and 10? That is negative 40. We need to list all the factors of negative 40. There are actually eight pairs. They are 10 and negative 4, 4 and negative 10, 8 and negative 5, 5 and negative 8, 40 and negative 1, 1 and negative 40, 20 and negative 2, and 2 and negative 20. Next is to choose the pair of factors. When that up, we get the value of our b. What is the value of our b? That's positive 3. Okay? So what we need to do right here is to get the sum of these pairs of factors and choose only the pair that has a sum of positive 3. Let's start. 10 plus negative 4, that's 6. 4 plus negative 10, that's negative 6. 8 plus negative 5, that's positive 3. 5 plus negative 8, that's negative 3. 40 plus negative 1, that's 39. 1 plus negative 40, that's negative 39. 20 plus negative 2, that's positive 18. 2 plus negative 20, that's negative 18. So obviously, the only pair that has a sum of positive 3 as indicated in our linear term, is the third pair, which are 8 and negative 5. So that's the reason why that's the next step that we have is to rewrite the original equation with four terms by replacing the middle term and making the two factors as the new linear terms. So this is your original equation. So we will replace your positive 3x to the two factors we have. So most probably, our 8 will become 8x and negative 5 will become negative 5x. So the new equation would be 10x squared plus 8x minus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. So 8, again, 8 become 8x, negative 5 become negative 5x. So we replaced positive 3x. So now we factor the new equation with four terms by grouping. The first group is 10x squared plus 8x, and our second group is negative quantity 5x plus 4. Because negative times 5x, that's negative 5x. Negative times positive 4, that's negative 4. So the next step that we need to do right here is to factor the greatest common denominator from each group. So first group 10x squared plus 8x. Our greatest common denominator for that, or the common factor, is... 2x. So that's the reason why we got 2x quantity 5x plus 4 minus quantity 5x plus 4 because 2x times 5x, that's 10x squared. 2x times 4, that's positive 8x. Then you just have to copy the second group. So the next thing that we need to do right here is that one thing that they have observed, we now have common factors of, uh, from our two groups. So that's the reason why 5x plus 4 is one, of, is one of our final factors. And the second factor would be the upfront terms. That would be 2x and negative 1. So therefore, our two factors of our original equation are quantity 2x minus 1 and quantity 5x plus 4. 2x minus 1 and the common factor 5x plus 4. 
So let's equate this to 0 to get the values of your x. So zero product rule, 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Then you need to move negative 1 to the right side. It becomes positive. 2x is equal to 1. Then divide both sides by 2. 2x divided by 2, that's x. And 1 divided by 2, that's 1 half. Next is 5x plus 4. We need to move positive 4 to the right. It becomes negative 4. Then since we have numerical coefficient um, 5, then we need to divide both sides by 5. Then 5x divided by 5, that's x. Then negative 4 divided by 5, that's negative 4 fifth. So let's do the checking. So for x is equal to 1 half, we need to substitute this value to the original equation, which is 10x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So 10 multiply the square of 1 half plus 3 multiplied by 1 half minus 4 is equal to 0. 1 half squared, that's 1 fourth times 10, that's 10 over 4. 3 times 1 half, that's 3 halves. Then copy minus 4 is equal to 0. Since these two fractions are not similar fractions, we need to look for the LCD, which is 4. So we have 10 over 4 plus 6 over 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. Why? Because 6 over 4 is also the same with 3 halves. Then, 16 over 4, that's the sum of your two similar fractions. 10 plus 6, the 16, then copy the denominator. Then, minus 4 is equal to 0. 16 divided by 4, that's 4. Minus 4 is equal to 0. So, 0 is equal to 0. So, this is a solution. So, next, 4x equals to negative 4 fifth. We need to substitute this value to the original equation, which is 10x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So 10 multiply the square of negative 4 fifth plus the product of 3 and negative 4 fifth minus 4 is equal to 0. Negative 4 fifth squared, that's 16 over 25 times 10, that's 160 over 25. So in lowest term, that's 32 over 5. Then the product of 3 and negative 4 fifth, that's negative 12 over 5, then minus 4 is equal to 0. Since both are similar fractions, you just have to add the numerator, then copy the denominator. 32 minus, 5, uh, minus 12, that's 20, then copy the denominator, which is 5. So 20 over 5, then minus 4 is equal to 0. 20 divided by 5, that's 4, then minus 4 is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 0. So this is a solution. So, any questions or clarifications? Alright, so none, so let's proceed. So, we have another example. 8x squared minus 28x plus 20 is equal to 0. Again, this is a perfect example of a quadratic equation where a is greater than 1. So, the first thing that we need to do right here is to identify the values of your a, b, and c. So, our a would be 8, that's beside x squared. Our b is negative 28 beside x, and our c, our constant term, is positive 20. So the next step that we need to do is to check the three terms if they have common factor or GCF, and include this common factor in the final answer. So obviously it's not x, right, or any variable, since our constant term doesn't have any variable. So for 8, negative 28, and positive 20, what is the greatest common factor? Anyone? That is positive 4. So that's the reason why if we factor that out, our new equation would be 4 quantity 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 is equal to 0. Because 4 times 2x squared, that is 8x squared. 4 times negative 7x, that's negative 28x. 4 times positive 5, that's positive 20. So the next thing that we need to do here is to get the product of a and c of the new equation and list all its factors. Our a here, that is positive 2. And our c, that's positive 5. So what is the product? That's positive 10. So we need to get all the factors of positive 10. They are 10 and 1, negative 1 and negative 10, 5 and 2, negative 2 and negative 5. Then the next condition is to choose the pair of factors when add up, we get the value of the b, which is negative 7. So we need to get the sum. 10 plus 1 is 11. Negative 1 plus negative 10, that's negative 11. 5 plus 2, that's positive 7. Negative 2 plus negative 5, that's negative 7. So obviously, 
the only pair that satisfies the two conditions, product of 10 and sum of negative 7, that is your fourth pair. So the next step is to rewrite the original equation with four terms by replacing the middle term and making the two factors as the new linear terms. So again, we need to replace negative 7x here with the two factors, negative 2 and negative 5. So our new equation would be 4, quantity 2x squared minus 2x minus 5x plus 5 is equal to 0. So again, we need to replace negative 7x to these two factors. That's the reason why negative 2x, negative 5x. Because as what the rule says, make the two factors as the new linear terms. So this would be your new equation. All right, so the next step that we need to do here is to factor the new equation with four terms by grouping. So that would be 4 quantity 2x squared minus 2x minus quantity 5x minus 5. Why negative 5? Because we need, if we will multiply negative by negative 5, that is positive 5. Negative times 5x, that's negative 5x. So the next thing that we need to do is to look for a common factor or your GCF in the two groups. In the first group, that is 2x. Second group, that is 5. So that would give us 4. Multiply 2x quantity x minus 1 minus 5 quantity x minus 1. So the reason why we have this factoring by grouping is to really have this parenthetical expression the same in the two groups. So for this example, we have x minus 1, which is also uh, which is a factor of group 1, is also a factor of group 2. So that is the reason why that's our first factor. Then the terms up front and this common factor. That is 2x minus 5. So that would give us, then you need to copy the 4. This is still part of the answer. So 4 quantity 2x minus 5, quantity x minus 1. So 2x, so this is where it came from. 2x then negative 5, then x minus 1 as the common factor of the two groups. Then copy 4, since it's still part of the answer. So this is actually the factored form of the original equation. However, this is not the answer. Since we are, we are talking about solving quadratic equations, so we are looking for the values of your x. So that's the time we will apply the zero product rule. All right, so you need to equate these factors to zero for quantity 2x minus 5 and x minus 1. So you have actually the option to expand it. 4 times 2x, that's 8x. 4 times negative 5, that's negative 20, is equal to 0. So you need to move 20 to the right side of the equation, so it will become positive. Then divide both sides by 8, so x equal to 20 over 8 or 5 halves. Or you can actually um, copy the factors inside the parentheses since 4 will be cancelled. So 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. Then you need to move 5 to the right side of the equation, so it will become positive. 2x is equal to 5, so divide both sides by 2, so x is 5 halves, so still the same. Our next factor is x minus 1. So simple as, simple as transferring 1 to the right side of the equation, so from negative, it will become positive. So the two values of our x axis would be 5 halves and positive 1. So at this point, we will do the checking. Alright, so for x equal to 5 halves, we need to substitute this value to the original equation. 8x squared minus 28x plus 20 is equal to 0. Next, we need to get the product of your 8 and the square of 5 halves minus the product of 28 and 5 halves plus 20 is equal to 0. Next is, you can actually do a technique here, the product of 8 and 25 over 4. 8 divided by 4, that's 2 times 25, that's 50. Then, minus 140 divided by 2, that's 70. Then, copy positive 20 is equal to 0. 50 minus 70, that's negative 20, plus 20 is equal to 0. So, 0 is equal to 0. So, this is a solution. Next, for x equal to 1, we need to substitute this value to the original equation. 8x squared minus 28x plus 20 is equal to 0. So, it's like the product of 8 and the square of 1 minus 28 times 1 plus 20 is equal to 0. So, that would be 8 times the square of 1, which is 1. That's 8 minus 28. 
because 28 times 1 is 28, so minus 28 plus 20 is equal to 0. So 8 minus 28, that's negative 20, plus 20 is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 0. So this is another solution. So any questions, clarifications? To wrap up the session, you're now able to solve quadratic equations when A is greater than 1. So same process. The first thing that you need to do is to identify the values of your A, B, and C. Then next is to check the three terms. If, if it has a common factor, then factor that out. If it's not, then proceed to the next step, which is to get the product for your A and C. Then list all its factors and choose the pair of factors that has a sum equal to your B. Then once you have that, you need to rewrite your original equation by replacing your middle term to your new factors. Your new factors, you just have to add x so that it will be the new linear terms of your new equation. Then after you have that, then that's the time you can actually do the factoring by grouping. But here's the crucial part. You need to make sure that there is a um, common parenthetical expression or common factor between your two groups so that you can factor that out successfully. So after that, you need to apply the zero product rule, equate these factors to zero, then do the checking right after. So again, this is me again, Sergis. Hopefully you have learned something for today. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon at the bottom to receive notifications about my new videos. So thank you for watching. See you in my next tutorial.